Week six on your SFL calendar marks the start of us starting to pay attention to playoff races in the Simulation Football League tonight. A matchup between the Chicago Wildcats and the Florida Storm, two teams very much in the thick of the playoff race. Welcome into the broadcast booth, everybody. Week six action on the board. Chris Curtis and Andy Hamilton in the booth with you for this one in the eye in Fort Lauderdale. Andy, how you doing? I'm doing great. I am looking to uh, quite the battle between these two teams. Curtis, I think this game will be decided on the defensive side of the ball, believe it or not. Yeah, whoever wants to step up and get those stops, uh, you see there on the highlight, third down offense, one of their main struggles on both sides near the bottom of the league. Yeah, and whichever team steps up on third down will most likely win this game. We need drives out of these teams, not splash plays, and whichever team puts together the most consecutive uh, long-standing drives, that team most likely, I think, will win this game. Should be a very, very good one. Chicago coming in after a big win over Arizona. Florida coming in after a tight loss to the Swarm one week ago. Should be a fun one. Fort Lauderdale, the eye, your kickoff is next. Just about to get things underway. The Storm going to receive the football for the first time in this football game. Week six of SFL action gets underway with this kickoff. Whole bevy of games. One other game tonight. Six games on the SFL family of networks tomorrow. And we are underway with the first one in this six week right now. This return from Robert Merrill after the 15 20 moves left at the 20 to the 23. And that is where. This first drive will get underway. Enter one Ron Cochran, who's had a bit of a uh, struggle this season, to say the least. He looks to get his team in a rhythm starting early. Yeah, 13 interceptions for Ron this season to only four touchdowns. Has definitely struggled to remain consistent and protect the football early in this game. Got to take care of the rock if you want to win. We'll get to the rest of the Storm offense here in just a moment. I formation. Cochran to throw to the left, uh, toe drag real quick, a five yard gain. The storm offense looks like this run. Cochran has mentioned Connor Weston, your halfback, J.W. Doyle, your feature fullback out of the storm offense. Stephen Bush, Robert Merrill, Optimus Klein, your trio of wide receivers, and E.J. Minson, who had the lone receiving touchdown for the storm a week ago. As we get the defense for the Wildcats in just one play's time. Cochran is under center. Two in the backfield for him. Hand off. Looks like Doyle, he's going to get a head of steam, get a first down out to the 33. The defense for the Wildcats looks like this. But he Whoa. plays. Hands. Oh, Hold on. no way. Optimus, Optimus down. Klein. That's not a good start for the Storm. As uh, Oh, he hit, the, hit his knee on the turf, it looked like. I'm not sure if it was a buckle there, but it did not look good. Yeah, he was trying to block Ron Hoff there on the other side. And uh, for whatever reason, I, I mean, just kind of fell awkwardly and uh, goes down. And that, for the Storm, is not the best way to uh, move the chains. No, not at all. We'll get an update on his, on his status here in just a bit. We'll get to the Chicago defense again in a bit as well. Cochran looks to throw over the middle. That's a catch. Not much to it. It'll be a eight, an eight-yard game. The Chicago defense looks like this. Defensive ends, Buddy Blaze and Scott Fountain. Defensive tackles, Gerald Judicessi and Raymond Jones, the third Judicessi, two sacks a week ago. Linebackers, Clint Hendershot and Blake Craze. We'll talk about him later. Greg Gaines, Jesse Vick, your cornerbacks. Maurice Spurgeon, Ron Hoff, your free safeties, and A.J. Barnes, your strong safety for the Wildcats. A bevy of interceptions for the secondary a week ago against Arizona. That's going to be through the middle and not being able to convert the second down into a first as it'll get to third and one Clint Hendershot comes up with the tackle. Yeah, J.W. Doyle is going to have a rough night of sledding against these two linebackers, Clint Hendershot and Blake Craze, arguably two of the best pairings in the simulation football league. Hendershot averages nine tackles a game, Craze 11 per game. That's 20 between the two. Wouldn't be surprised if they try another run here on third down. We'll see. Cochran will throw instead to the outside. That is a catch towards the sideline, caught at the midfield stripe. That's a good one. Doyle on the grab, his first reception of the ballgame. He gets him a first down. 
And so far tonight through this first drive, they've been painting those outside lines with some out routes. Interested to see if that's a plan they continue with. Uh, I, if I've learned one thing, Curtis, it's a dangerous game to try and expect your receivers to always tap the toes on the sidelines. Fair enough. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Coming from the Vancouver owner, well, that makes a lot of sense. Especially in this building. <laughs> Under center is Cochran. Two of the backfield. Plenty of drop back. He's going to have to escape out of the pocket. Throws over the right side and nearly picked off. Another dangerous throw. Nearly went back the other way. That was Greg Gaines. Yeah, and Gaines has five interceptions on the season. Surprising that he couldn't pull that one in. But every member of this Chicago secondary has at least two interceptions, Curtis. So uh, if you're going to test them, you got to be really careful on uh, where you put the ball. Just ask Ashley Jackson from last week. Tulsa gave up the, or not Tulsa, but either way, the Jackson gave up six interceptions a week ago to the Chicago secondary. Cotter to throw to the outside. He will go. And has to try to turn the edge. Nothing doing much after the catch. Third and four. It'll be at least a manageable third down for Doyle. Well, and that's arguably how they have to get him involved um, is in the passing game, only averaging 1.6 yards per carry coming into the right. game. Um Flor it's it's no secret, Curtis. Florida is a passing team, uh, yep. and Chicago has to shut down some of those short passes to get out of some of these drives. Big chance here to get off the field on third and four. Big third down here. Both teams in the 40 percentile for third down. That's over the middle. That's going to be a catch and a converted third down into first. They're in to field goal range in the Chicago end. Bush ran clean there on uh, what looked to be kind of a, a little bit of a slant or a post route right up the seam there on the slant. I mean, right in front of Marie Spurgeon. Good job by the veteran Cochran to squeeze that ball in there right in front of uh, Marie Spurgeon, the, the veteran free safety. It was a good throw, and it's able to move the change just what Florida was looking for. So after a struggle on third down in the coming weeks up to this, they're one for one tonight. We'll see if they can continue that for the defensive line for Chicago. First and 10 handoff, Doyle up the middle, not much. They'll give him a yard out of charity. 31-yard line is where it's at. Spurgeon was right there to make the play. He is a free safety that will walk up to the line occasionally. Did so on that play. It looked like they were lined up in the 4-2 nickel, but the instincts from Spurgeon to get to the line um, and, and expect a run, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he moved up here again. Similar formations for Florida the entire drive. Two in the backfield again. This is going to the outside. It'll be Doyle as he's not able to bring that one. Or not Doyle. It'll be Connor Weston. He had a problem with drops last week as well. And this time it drops uh, for a third down. Yeah, well, and I was saying it, Curtis. I mean, when you expect those receivers, and especially when you start throwing to your halfback and your fullback, when you're yep. expecting them to make more catches on those sidelines than not, you're going to get into some of these situations where they get called out of bounds or like that, they make a drop when they should have had a catch. And now you're behind the chains and you got to force something down the field against this vigorous secondary. I'm talking about forcing something down the field. They got no choice here. Got to get to the 22 for a first. That's over the middle. Nice grab. Not able to get the first down. It'll be fourth and two. And that'll bring us to a uh, field goal situation as, Eric, as Minson had a catch over the middle. Yeah, it was a nice grab to get the uh, tight end involved. That was the first time we've called his name tonight. And important that we do as he's uh, currently, Curtis, I mean, they're one of their better receivers. Three touchdowns for him. Mm. Um, offense still on the field, though. I, with this Chicago defensive formation, I would snap it. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And see if uh, they do actually do that. Got eight left on the play clock. And looks like Chicago holding fast. This looks like it's going to be a timeout situation. And they will call the timeout and bring out Ethan Sneed. Ethan Sneed, 12 for 12 on the year. And a uh, chance to go 13 for 13 in the first quarter. Well, and if you were going to go ahead and try and draw them off sides, that's, you know, all well and good. Um, I just don't know if you wanted to burn the timeout this early in a game right. that could be really close, especially um, when you get the opening kickoff. Um, you know, take your points and, and then see what your defense can do, but try to hold on to the timeout is what I would have done. Right. See what Snead has for us. Left-footed kicker, left hash from the 23-yard line, make it a 39-yarder from the spot. See if Chicago special team unit can get to it. Snap is good. Hold good, kick up and on the way. It is up. 
and it is through. No issue there. They'll call it officially from 40 Florida as a 3-0 lead. Yeah, important kick for the Storm to get some points on the board on their opening drive. I mean, when you drive down the field, you want to end up with seven, but if you're going to have to end up with anything, three is better than nothing, Curtis. I'm yeah. not a wizard at math, but I, uh, I do know that three <laughs> is more than zero. That'll work. That'll work. That's all you need to know for this job, right? <laughs> Kick going to be up and on the way here in just a moment. Davius Reed back, the return man for the Wildcats. Kick is up and gone. It'll be returned from the five-yard line. Catch there, 10-15, left at the 15, the 20-25, and gets caught actually at the 24 officially. And now we'll enter one E.T. King, another veteran quarterback in this league who really uh, – Starting to kind of find a rhythm. Also has a nice tandem in the backfield with Ash Odom as well. He had a touchdown and two interceptions a week ago. Yeah, and Mike Improta leading the way at the fullback position, I think is doing a big part to helping Ash Odom to 4.7 yards per carry this season. Not on the field on this first play. Oh, excuse me. He's at the tight end position on this first play. Throw to the outside. That's going to be a chance for Odom to touch the football early, and that will be a seven-yard reception. The Chicago offense... Uh, but Optimus Klein may return, by the way. IET King, Ash Odom, we talked about Mike and Prota as well. Corey Carter, Liam Hammer, Davius Reed, JC Torres, your four wide receivers. Ryan Yosef and Shan Varner, your dual tight ends for the Wildcats. So good news for the Storm. Optimus Klein may return. Should might see him here soon. Seven yard completion gets him a second and three. And ET King is under center. And off. Odom tries to get around the corner. Not going to happen. And let's talk a little bit about the Storm defense. Big Sexy Alex Dominguez and Alessandro Tomaello, your defensive ends. Nicholas Warner, Frank Champion, your linebackers. Ryan Davidson, Evan Carroll, your cornerbacks. Free safety Ryan Tobin with two interceptions last week. Jeff Malinishin and Andrew Francis, your safeties for the Storm. So, going to be a good defensive battle. These two defenses looking to take, to take steps in the right direction. That throw Ooh. might be a P.I. call. I would expect I, D.P.I. I think on Davidson. I don't know what you would call there because it looked like Warner was in the spot to potentially have pass interference, but the throw was thrown underneath him and hit him in the back. Maybe it was because he never turned his head around, yep. Curtis. I, I don't know. It was kind of bang, bang, really tough. I probably would have let that one play out, but then again, I'm not wearing the stripes. Yep, R62 earning his paycheck and earning the ire of this the uh, Florida crowd as they they will call a DPI on Nicholas Warner. That'll get them set up with a new set of downs at the 35-yard line. Under center is King. Odom in the backfield. Four wide spread out. Time the pocket, starts collapsing, quick throw, right side, quick catch, five-yard gain, make it second and a nickel. Yeah, and they are trying to get their receivers involved early. Davius Reed, just his seventh reception of the season, Curtis. Kind of amazing that we are, uh, this is the yeah. sixth game he's played in, and he just now is uh, averaging one reception per, or one reception per game. Second and five, handoff Odom through the middle. He's going to have a first down and a couple more. First and 10 at the 46. Download the score stream app and follow your favorite team for live scoring updates when you aren't able to catch a game live. You can follow just your team or the entire league. The first esports league on the app. Download for iOS and Android today. Score stream, the official live scoring app of the Simulation Football League. First and 10 for ET King and Company. Four on the defensive line for the Storm. And off Odom, trying to get inside. He's going to get one yard, not much more than that, out to the 47. Yeah, interesting, Curtis, that uh, Odom is struggling here. Good job by Florida to kind of scheme for him. Obviously, one of the big playmakers for the Chicago offense is they average about 111 yards rushing per game. And so far, they're doing a good job of bottling him up up the middle. And they're doing a good job without sending extra help as well. Four on the defensive line's been there look consistently in this drive. They send him again. King to throw, steps up in the pocket in a dangerous spot, backs up, throws wow. right side, caught, and that's a first down at the 42-yard line. I think the Storm let E.T. King escape there. Well, just an incredible job by King to, to feel where he's at in the pocket and be able to move despite pressure coming at him. I'm amazed we're not going to get a replay and then somehow finds Davius Reed, who's just standing past the first down marker. It looks like a uh, old lady at a bus stop just waiting for the, the right... Uh, <laughs> the right bus to come along. 
King to throw. Deep over the middle. That's going to be a catch over the middle to the 17-yard line. That's where they're going to mark him. What a grab. It's first and 10 as they're inside the red zone. Shan Varner, big play. Shan, 22nd reception of his season so far. Had 279 yards coming into the night, but the big one, Curtis, 13 yards per catch. Keeps that average up, gets behind the defense, and a beautifully thrown ball by E.T. King right over the head of Andrew Francis, who has two interceptions on the year. I mean, when you're going to play with fire, you better bring bigger matches than the other team. Absolutely. Four receptions last week. He gets his first one here. It's first and 10 from the 17-yard line. King in the gun has Odom with him. Three-step drop, throw, end zone, got it! Touchdown, wow. Chicago! What a grab! That is Shan Varner, I believe, with that catch. No, J.C. Torres? Yeah, Torres, yes. his first touchdown reception of the season. King looks really confident in this throw, didn't waste any time, puts it on the dime, and then Torres, a great job of holding on despite getting his kneecap busted out. Yeah. What a catch, and Chicago takes the lead, Curtis. Great adjustment in the air from Torres as well. He's able to catch that basically on his right shoulder as he has to reach back to grab it. Real accurate throw. It was either going to be Torres or nobody. What a throw from him. And it is a 6-3 game pending the extra point. Anthony CC, your SFL Special Teams Player of the Week from last week, gets this one up and through. Storm going to get the ball back. It is 7-3 about halfway through this first quarter. Stay with us. I know. Back to it in Florida. 7-3 lead for the Wildcats as they, the Storm are going to get the ball back here for their second drive of the football game. Great drive for the Wildcats for their first drive, marching it all the way downfield. And this will be returned from the goal line by Robert Merrill. He's got a juke left at the 20-yard line, get to the 24. And let's bring Cochran out for his second drive. They got a field goal on their first one. Uh, we're able to convert a couple of third downs, and uh, it looked pretty good for the Storm. We were looking to try to develop an offensive rhythm. Yeah, slow moving. Um, they didn't necessarily, you know, blow anyone out of the water with the way that they went down the field, but they definitely got down there. They need to repeat that if they want to keep this game alive for them. Just took to a look at A.J. Barnes. He had an interception last week in that win over Arizona. And off J.W. Doyle oh, through the room. middle. He's got plenty of room to go, and he's got a first down right off the hop for the Storm in the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, just a beautiful play design there by Florida to really get him going. I mean, they needed that out of him. Mm -hmm. Just room up the middle, over pursuit there on the defensive side by Raymond Jones the third. Nice job by Doyle to continue the run through to the secondary, and Ron Hoff has to clean it up at the end. They, they could use a couple runs like that tonight here, Curtis, to really, um, you know, counteract some of the passing game and get some of the pressure off of Ron Cochran. I count four offensive touches so far for J.W. Doyle in this football game between passing and run game. So he's been a big part of it so far. Under center is Cochran. Four wide, look to throw. Crossing pattern, right side caught. Not much to that one other than an eight-yard gain. And it'll be second and two. Hernandez with the catch. And I, I think, you know, you and I talked a little bit about this, Curtis, prior to the broadcast. These linebackers for Chicago, are you going to blitz them? Are you going to play them in coverage when the Florida goes to pass? They play them in coverage there. Hendershot cleans it up. Catch is made, but that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world as long as you can clean it up. Cochran to throw. Gets it to the outside instead. It might be able to turn it upfield and get one. Has to truck through one. Can't get through the second. Make it third and one. Talking about the last time these two teams met, a uh, time management problem for Chicago equaled a Florida win back in August of 2019. Yeah, it was just a tough situation for Chicago as they were trying to kick the field goal to tie this thing up and send it to overtime. Couldn't get the field goal unit on in time. 
as a receiver was called inbounds when thought to be out of bounds. And unfortunately, that was the tail of the tape. You see Torres Optimus climb both with good days. Doyle through the middle has a first down and more. He continues to drag Wildcats. And it'll be first and 10 just shy of the goal, or just shy of the half, uh, the midfield line. Well, if you're Chicago, you're not trying to keep J.W. Doyle from picking up a couple yards here and there. So on third and one, you almost expected to give up the first down. If you're Chicago, your goal here is to stop the deep passes, keep all passing plays under five or six yards. Um, you know, you, you can let Doyle have a day if he needs to, uh, but when it's third and a yard, nine times out of ten, the fullback's going to pick that up. Off again through the middle. That's going to be a four-yard gain for Doyle, and he's been a majority of the offense for the Storm. But uh, we talked about it a little bit before. Chicago's got to force Cochran to beat them, but right now they're letting the run game from the Storm beat them. Yeah, and, it, you know, it gets tricky. I think this early in the game, you are going to face more runs than if you were up by two or three scores. That's a little bit obvious to say, but that's kind of Chicago's game plan is get up and then let make Cochran beat them. And that's going to be Doyle again. Another couple of yards, make it third and manageable. Third and three as they are on the precipice of field goal range again. Hendershot and Kray's so far having a really good night tonight. I think that was Hendershot's fourth tackle through this first quarter. Yep. And he's been a monster so far. So you take a look at him here. He'll look to try to make a stop for his team on third down. Big third down here. Florida wants it for momentum's sake. Two in the backfield. Cochran to throw. Five-step drop. Right side. Thrown and dropped. It'll hit the turf harmlessly. And is that Weston again? I believe it is with the drop. Two targets. Two drops for him. Exact same play, too. They flare the fullback and the halfback out of the backfield there. It's a beautiful play. I mean, they're free for four yards. The only issue is making sure that they catch the ball. Curtis, a lot of these players who are playing running back are great. Running back and fullback are great after the catch but getting the ball in their hands sometimes can be an issue, and it is there, and it ends the Florida drive right at their own 42. Big drop, big third down uh, fail there as it'll be a punt. Chicago will get the ball back as this will tail out of bounds at the nine-yard line. ETK and company back out on the field after a short break. You're watching the Simulation Football League on 11 and FTF. And welcome back into Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Into the eye as we get things going with this first play from scrimmage for Chicago's second drive of the game. 7-3 lead for E.T. King Company. He'll throw to the outside. It is Odom. Football in hand. He's going to truck one and get out of bounds at the 16-yard line. That's clutch. That gives them a little bit of room to operate their offense. Yeah, King now here, six for six through the first drive in that play there. So far having quite the night, 71 yards and the touchdown on the opening drive to J.C. Torres. Uh, I mean, Curtis, I tell you what, he's, he's really starting off well. He is indeed. First quarter is done. We come back for the second stanza in just a moment. Stay with us.
And back to it, Storm and the Wildcats. Wildcats have the football moving left to right across your screen at the 15-yard line as E.T. King gets back set under center. Two in the backfield. One of them is Odom, the other one in Proto. Second in couple, trying to get a couple more yards here. Odom through the right side. He's Look got out. some room to go. Continues to truck his way forward. Gets a first down to the 27-yard line. Well, uh, they should have been careful uh, when they handed him off the ball. Should have had a couple uh, cops escorting him down the road because that sure was a <laughs> wide load as he just ran through some of those smaller defenders. Uh, and it took Big Sexy chasing him down to bring him down. I mean, this run game for Chicago has really been powerful this year, Curtis, as Ash Odom has really come into his own. Had 67 yards and a touchdown last week against Arizona. 154.9, the QB rating for E.T. Kane. We're going to talk about him in here in a moment. He's in the gun, too, with him. Looks to throw left side towards the sideline. Caught. What a tackle that is. First and 10 for Chicago. Going back to E.T. King, though. We talk about uh, the quarterbacks in this game. Two veteran quarterbacks, two veteran arm slingers. And the comparison's really, really good, Andy. Do First of all, do you think E.T. King is a Hall of Famer? Absolutely. I, I don't think there's any doubt that either of these quarterbacks in this game um, are going to be Hall of Fame candidates. Um, I think E.T. King uh, has definitely put up a professional resume that has shown that he deserves to be in the conversation for Hall of Fame, and I think his stats back that up. King to throw right side. That is tipped and incomplete. As we take a look at the numbers side by side for these two, Cochran, a couple of championships under his belt as well. You got to figure he's probably a shoe in. The big question mark there was ET. Well, and when you look at the numbers, I mean, you would almost argue the opposite. King has more yards passing, um, you know, a few more interceptions, but definitely has been a little bit more of a, a passer. Um, the only thing that Cochran has that King maybe does not is the rings. Um, and that, you know, could be coming depending on how, you know, the rest of his career plays out. Um, I, I don't think we can step a little too far ahead of anything, Curtis. Right. That's fair. JC Torres with a nice completion gets it to third and one. These two teams total, total combined four for six on third down. And Chicago has their second crack at a third down here. See if they can keep perfect on the day. Third and one. This is a fairly big one. Odom's in the backfield. Looks like the Storm are expecting a run. We'll see what King has. It'll be a pass to the outside. It'll be Odom wow. with the football in his hand. Plenty of room to go. He's got plenty of green in front of him. He's going to get to the outside, out to the 35-yard line. What a play. What a play design for the Wildcats. They get a first down. Well, it was beautiful. Perfect play call against Florida's defense. You know, you have these two great defensive ends. Um, and you let them get up field. And, and when you're a defensive end and you get past the tackle, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to make a sack. It's going to happen right now. And then uh, <laughs> King just floats it right over their head beautifully to Ash Odom. And then when you turn around and you see the running back on a screen, you're like, ah, crap. And uh, he gets going. From the 33-yard line, Odom with the ball in hand again. Got some blockers in front of him, but they uh, ditch him on the route. And it'll be a one-yard gain to the 31. And as you saw, the line didn't get as long upfield. You know, they were a little bit more prepared for that screen on the second go-ahead here. And so interesting to see whether Chicago abuses that going forward or whether they sprinkle it in. If they sprinkle it in sparingly, that, that could be really key, Curtis. Offset player is Mike Improta has yet to touch the football in this game, and that'll be a run to the left for Odom. Nothing doing. It'll be a tackle for loss. Make it third and ten. And the Storm defense really known for their tackles for loss this season. Yeah, Frank Champion in there on the play. Uh, really great linebacker in the simulation football league. Averages about seven yards uh, or seven tackles per game for this Florida defense this season. King is in the gun. Third and long. Throw right side tipped wow. and incomplete. Real nice play from Ryan Davidson to get his hand up, knock it to the turf. Yeah, and he needed to make that play because if King just puts that a little bit further over the shoulder of Davidson, and I get that the pressure's coming, you got to get rid of it, but just a little bit more, and Corey Carter's still dancing in the end zone while we're speaking. <laughs> Good play defensively from the Florida secondary, and that's going to bring up Anthony Cece, his first attempt at a field goal. Five for five a week ago. 
as long as 51 yards, and he's going to look to try to knock through his first of the game and get Chicago a seven-point lead. This is a long one. We're looking at a 49-yarder from here, possibly 50, where the ball is positioned from the left hash. Right-footed kicker waiting on the snap. Snap is good. Hold good. Got a lot of leg under it. This might be good, and it is right through. Probably would have hit it from 53 with that kind of leg. Good work, and that is a 10-3 to score. And this is why you sign the kicker to the contract. Chicago, in years past, has not had a star kicker and has regretted it. This season, they say, you know what? We're not going to waste any time. We're getting the kicker. We're signing him up. And, Curtis, there's another CC's that's all you can eat. And CC here for the Wildcats uh, is all you can kick. Absolutely. Uh, they used Jesus Garcia for a number of seasons in Chicago, the uh, non-contract kicker, as this will be up and gone, returned by Robert Merrill from one yard deep in the end zone. 15 to the 20, left at the 20 the to the 22-yard line, and that is where Ron Cochran will start this drive. Move right to left across your screen as the Storm come back out in a seven-point game. And there is no need to panic if you're Florida. You obviously let up three, so you're still now down by seven instead of only being down by four. Still very much in this game. The question is, uh, you know, what can you do with this drive? Can you get points out of it? If so, how many? Cocker in the southpaw in the gun. Two with him. Looks to throw. Quick drop, throw right side, caught, but he has to come back to the line of scrimmage to grab it. That'll be a two-yard gain. Nothing much to that one as Stephen Bush gets one. The throw was a little bit inside by Cochran, and what that forced the receiver to do was kind of spin and pirouette uh, as he was trying to make the catch. Uh, and Stephen Bush is more of a receiver than he is a ballerina there, Curtis, and unfortunately <laughs> that results in a, uh, a couple yards loss based on where he would have had it had it been on the out route. Cochran with plenty of options. Quick drop back. Wow. He gets hit as he threw. No, untouched and unabated to the quarterback. That's not going to work as it'll be third and a mile. Judas Sessi came in there like a rocket taking off from the station. Had two sacks last week against Arizona. Curtis yep. was trying to make it a third in two weeks just there. Uh, and it brings up a long third and eight. But, uh, fortunate for Cochran to be able to get that ball out of his hands. You take a look at Minson. See what maybe he can make an impact here. Over the middle, perhaps. Cochran to throw. Short throw and nearly caught, but not able to bring that one in. And that is going to be fourth and eight, and the Storm will punt. And it was a good route, good throw, uh, but unfortunately, Curtis, when you get down to the fourth and fifth receiver, they don't have a lot of reps, and so unfortunately... You know, you're asking them to make a catch that they're not as used to making as a guy like Optimus Klein would have been uh, had he been in the ball game there. So... Florida here battling a little bit of a war of attrition with some of their depth to see uh, if some of their role players can make plays. Marcus Agrippa, ball in the air. It looks like a booming punt downfield. Gets all the way down to the 27-yard line. Return to the 33, and that's where E.T. King and company will start this next drive. 10-3 Chicago as we're about halfway through this second quarter. Back to it in Florida. 10-3 Chicago. They have the lead and the ball. So we play with 7-13 left in this first quarter. Handoff Odom from the first place in scrimmage. He'll get a couple of yards, second and seven. Your touchdown passing leaders for the season. It is A.J. Caswell, Tom Pepper, Angus McLean, Christian Christensen also with 14 as well. And then you take a look at the other two, two of them in this game. In 19th, Ron Cochran in 20th, E.T. Gang. Yeah, neither quarterback this season has started out looking like 
the quarterbacks of old that we've seen where we were yeah. debating whether they would be in the Hall of Fame, but every game is an opportunity to turn that around. You never know when you might have a game where one of those quarterbacks just really goes off. It's going to be an Odom run through the middle, but nothing doing. Third and five update from across town, Queen City. And the uh, Queen City and Carolina tied 3-3 into the first quarter in their game. The only other game going on in the SFL this evening. Six games live tomorrow. It's going to be a heck of a Sunday for the uh, Simulation Football League and across the entire family of networks. Third and five. King left side. That's caught. Have to come back to the football, but it's good enough for a first down. What a play from a playmaker there in J.C. Torres. Dangerous throw from King, but when you have your trust in your guy on the outside, uh, you know, it right. gives you an opportunity to potentially have a mismatch. Torres coming into the game, 21 catches, no touchdowns, uh, and tonight he already uh, has four catches, 65 yards, and a score. Seven in the box defensively for Florida on this first down. New set again for King and company. The outside throw, trying to turn it up field. Nothing much doing other than that, but it is a nine-yard gain. Shan Varner, his second catch. And Varner at tight end has slowly built himself up as one of the premier receiving threats, has always kind of been there for Chicago, but this season has really set himself apart as a dangerous weapon for this Chicago offense. Teams have to start taking notice. In the gun, two with him. It's Odom and it is Improto. Time to throw over the middle. Deep and should have been picked off. Nothing due when the safety got in front of it, could not bring it in, make it third and one. One and one, tight end on a safety. You like that mismatch. Varner has the height there on the defensive back, but a little bit of an underthrown ball uh, brings up this third and one. But Curtis, I really like this shot on second and short. You got to like your chances to pick this third and one up. That was Ryan Tobin with the pass deflection. See what King can do on third and short. The entire playbook open to him. A quick five-step drop thrown to Odom. He's going to have some time to get a field and get the first down. That did not look like it was going to work at the offset. No, it wasn't as smooth as the one we saw earlier in the game, Curtis, regarding a screen. They threw it out to Odom, but he had to stop and really turn around to get the ball. And... When you do that, you, I mean, you're slowing your momentum down as opposed to catching it on the run. But Chicago still able to convert and get here into storm territory. Uh, outside of field goal range, they need about 10 yards. King to throw. Quick play over oh. the middle. That is a catch and a hit. And I do mean Varner got absolutely smoked after the grab. Disrespectful. I mean... When you hit a guy in the shoulders like that, you don't expect him to, to spin and kind of do a flip backwards, but he did yeah. so. Still a nine-yard pickup, though, and you could take another shot here again, second and one. And I think Varner will take that hit all the time if it means he's going to get nine yards on every play. Under center, E.T. King. Plenty of time. Goes Odom's way. He might be able to turn the edge. Does he get there? He's close. No, didn't he's get it. Yeah, they're going to say no. It's going to be third and one. I tend to disagree. I think the ball was over the yellow line there. Uh, it depends on his foot, Curtis. I thought his foot might have been pushed out of bounds just shy of the line to gain, and then it's a conversation about where the ball is. Third right. and one here, though. They're lining up in the same formation. I, I would throw a screen to that top side. Might also just give it to Odom through the middle here. He's shown he's, he has no problem trucking through people. This time he'll go to Odom again. Same play from earlier. It's a truck oh. through for a first down. And then he is absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree. But he does not care. He's got a first down, and they continue to move the ball. Well, I thought he had a death wish, Curtis, the way that he angled that thing back into the middle of the field. But in reality, he was looking for contact. Davidson did a little dance on the sideline on that second down play when he brought him down a yard shy. And Ash Odom said, look, I can still pick up the first down here, boys. They're in field goal range from here. Anthony CC chomping at the bit. They might not need him. King, thrown deep over the middle, caught! And he's in, he is! That's going to be a Chicago touchdown! What a play! It's J.C. Tor. no, it's Shan Varner over the middle. Man, Shan Varner, that was the weirdest touchdown dance I've ever seen, but it still counts <laughs> for six points, believe it or not. 
The big boy floats up there, gets right behind the secondary. The safeties were distracted by the big name wide receivers on the outside, and the gritty Shan Varner gets six points. Great play. It'll put them up two Man, scores. Man, you got to love that. That's awesome. That's an awesome play from Shan Varner to be able to get up and bring that one in. And I uh, give him a four out of ten in the dance move strictly for effort. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big guy. You got to give him more than that. I mean, he, he, he's, he's got a lot to work with. Kick up by Anthony CC. That is up, and it is through. 17-3. to three. It's a 14-point game. Give the Storm back the football, and they are uh, looking around at, the, at everybody else on the sideline saying, okay, we need to step up. Well, and it's silent here, Curtis. If you if you stick yep. your head outside of this window here in this booth, I mean, you can almost hear someone ordering nachos at the concession stand. <laughs> extra cheese, extra peppers. Okay, that's what that was. <laughs> Kick up and on the way here in just a moment as this is up and gone. Robert Merrill waiting on the return. Gets it at the goal line to the 20, right at the 20, to the 23, closing in on the 24. And that's where they're going to bring him down. Ron Cochran back out on the field. And uh, a couple of failed drives in a row puts them in a really tough spot. Yeah, they really need points here. I, I was saying on their last drive, Curtis, they didn't need to get nervous they need points here otherwise it's going to be nervous time yeah and we go back to that uh that timeout that they took earlier in the half as well which only leaves them two in a potentially half ending situation with 329 to go depending on how long this drive goes that'll be over the right side caught quick little middle grab it's an eight yard completion to the 32. Hendershot another tackle across the middle this Florida team has been targeting the middle and the outsides of the field. They haven't had to take a deep shot yet, Curtis. But if this game keeps going the way that it is, they're going to be taking some deep shots later. Two yards to gain for the first. Four on the defensive line for Chicago. And off and going nowhere on the run is J.W. Doyle. Third and two and no gain. You need to pick this up. Doyle, a tough run there. And again, it's Hendershot. I mean, when you're working against two of the best linebackers in the league, you're going to struggle sometimes. You're not going to always hit a big run. They got to pick this up. Two on the right, one on the left for Cochran. Doyle is in the backfield. Quick throw over the middle. And that is very dangerous, obviously, as that will touch two different Wildcats before it hits the ground harmlessly. And again, the Stormer in a punting situation. Clint Hendershot coming out and just making tonight his night so far. Uh, a ton of tackles, that pass deflection there. I mean, he's he's just been all over the field, right. Curtis. Fourth and a bunt, fourth and a couple anyway, and Marcus Agrippa going to be back out to punt this one away and try to get as much as he can on it. Chicago looks to try to send some extra help, try to get this thing blocked if they can. Nothing doing on that side as Agrippa gets it off with uh, no relative stress. That's going to be a return from Davius Reed. Nothing much doing on it. And to the 26-yard line, we go first and 10 for E.T. King. King back out. I mean, and Curtis, this drive is important for Chicago. I mean, if they put points on the board here to, to end this first half, I mean, Florida is really going to struggle in the locker room to try and figure out what they can do to flip this script because right now it's all Wildcats. And not to mention that the Wildcats are going to get the ball back at the start of the second half as well. So lots of momentum on uh -oh, their side. Out. That's going to be Odom to the left. He breaks another tackle and gets all the way down to the 42-yard line. And they continue to move the sticks and let Odom do work. Uh, Ash Odom there looking a little bit like a snowball on a hill full of snow, just picking up steam as he goes down and gets some good blocks and rolls through another one. And, I mean, Ash Odom, if, if he is going to get going, Florida, you know, might as well start packing up in the locker room. 120 seconds left to halftime in a 17-3 game. Chicago with the football. Be back for the rest of the half in just a moment.
And back to it, 17-3, 14-point game as we are in the latter part of this second quarter. Going into halftime offset, I formation for E.T. King and plenty in the box defensively. I'd probably expect a steady diet of Ash Odom here, Andy, going into the last two minutes. Well, and it'll be uh, Odom on the left. He will get one carry and a couple of yards. Continue. It's an interesting thought. Do you push the ball down the field in an attempt to get a touchdown? You want to score here, right? Mm -hmm. But obviously you don't want to score too fast and give Florida an opportunity to score themselves. So use Odom, but know that you have to get down the field more than you are on run plays unless he can break a big one. Split backs for King. Hand off again to Odom, right through the inside of the defensive line, third and in inches. He gains just about the line to gain. Yeah, so far, Curtis, I don't know if you've ever poured a hot coffee over a, an ice cube, um, but that's really what it looks like when Ash Odom runs through this defense. I mean, the defense looks rock solid, and then Odom just kind of finds a crease and gets to the bottom of your cup. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Hand off Odom again, and this time, yes, he is going to get there. He breaks through another one. What a broken tackle. It almost looked like he was going to get taken down for a loss there. Odom says no and keeps trucking forward. And off through the middle, following his blocker into the middle. And gets a couple more yards. They start to run an up-tempo kind of offense here. No change in formation for the Wildcats. They seem pretty comfortable in this particular formation. Odom again, they continue to run the football because it's working. Now it's a third and four, and they're going to take a timeout. Well, and I think Shan Varner is going to have to give Ash Odom the new nickname of Miley Cyrus because, boy, he's looked like a wrecking ball running through this defense at times the way that he lowers the shoulder. Third and four, Storm crowd trying to find something to get loud about. This first half has not gone their way. Trips right. King is in the gun by himself. Man coverage. Low snap, has the football thrown over the right, over the middle anyway, and that is caught for a first down. Not much to that one. That was Shan Varner on that grab. Working on Frank Champion there. That's a mismatch. King to throw again, and that one is a real nice play by the defense. Get up to knock it away, and that is second and ten. All on the defensive line, too. He had Varner again on the slant route, but the pressure caused him to have to move in the pocket. Great job by Florida bringing the heat. Take a look at Ash Odom. He's had a heck of a first half so far in this one. Offset eye formation for King. Looks to throw. Moves in the pocket. Gets hit as he threw, and that's going to hit the ground. That was uh, an interesting little acrobatic throw there from, uh, from King, but it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, sometimes you're going to take those hits. I don't know if the check down was worth taking the hit for. Maybe you should have just fell down on the ground and let Big Sexy, you know, dance over top of you as he got a sack. But... It, it does stop the clock and give them a chance here on third and 10 to try and convert this. More man coverage on the outside. Let's see how that works out. Let's see what Storm can do. They would love to get a stop here on third down and at least try to get some momentum going into the half. King to throw, going for oh. the first down and more to catch down to the six yard line. They're gonna mark him at the seven. It's Davius Reed. Just embarrassed the defender. I mean, watch this, Curtis. Right over the top of his head. Look at that. He takes it off the crown of Davidson's helmet. You could not be more embarrassed as a defender than having the ball basically almost hit you on the crown of the head. And Davius Reed picks it off the top of your helmet to make this a chip shot attempt for CeCe. Yeah, this should be no-brainer for Anthony CeCe, a 27-yarder from here. Right hash for the right-footed kicker. bring it a little left low snap and they need to time this one well they do it is up in through 24 yards for three points make it a 17 point lead likely how we're going to end the first half well and it was a good drive by chicago they got down the field they used a lot of the clock so they didn't give florida much time um, on this back end and really just showed that you know hey they're here to play they know what they're doing and they're ready to put this game away Kick up and on the way. Merrill waiting deep for the return. And he has it again at the goal line. Moves it to the 20, right at the 20-yard oh. line. And he is absolutely knocked out. First and 10 
at the 21-yard line for Cochran and company and likely going to be one play before the half. Man, that looked like a Mack truck just ran into uh, something much smaller, like a smart car. <laughs> that thing probably folded like a like an aluminum, aluminum can as well. Yeah, when that happens, all you can do is hope that no one got hurt. Exactly. Exactly. Looks like a probable run play to end this first half. Nope, they'll throw. Cochran to get rid of it. He will get the pass off. It'll be a four-yard completion, and that is going to do it for the first half of play on the Minson reception. So 20-3. to three. It's a 17-point spread as we enter the halftime locker rooms. Andy Hamilton, your thoughts on a fairly one-sided first half? Yeah, despite the first drive from Florida, Chicago has really taken the keys to this car and started driving away. Uh, the Storm are really going to have to pick it up here in the second half. When we look across the stats, time of possession goes to Chicago, yardage to Chicago, rushing yards to Chicago, passing yards heavily towards Chicago. First downs three times the amount of first downs that Florida had there, Curtis. This Chicago team is rolling, and uh, Florida has to give a uh, pep talk in the locker room. They have to get their, these guys fired up. Chicago 8 for 9 on third downs in that first half as well. Going the other way, the Storm 3 for 7. So at least uh, about battling the normal batting average. Receiving leaders for Chicago, 5 receptions for J.C. Torres. The tight end 4, that was Shan Varner with 4 receptions. It is Davius Reed with 3, also the bunch of returns. Corey Carter and Liam Hammer, no receptions in that first half for them. On the other side, it is uh, 2 receptions for Stephen Bush and E.J. Minson. Those are your receiving leaders so far. For those guys, 11 for 17 is Ron Cochran through the first half of play. Not a ton of yardage for him as yet to hit the century mark. On the other side, though, E.T. King, exactly 200. He's 18 for 23. Going to be a good uh, second half, it would seem. The uh, Wildcats going to get the ball back, though. So if you are the Storm, it is imperative, Andy, that you get a stop out of the second half uh, first drive. Yeah, one, well, if you know anything about Florida, you know they're not going to give up no matter what the deficit is. But... Interesting to see this Storm team down by so much so early. Not something we're used to seeing in the past three to five years, Curtis. This Storm team has been the, the, the dominating team, not the team that gets dominated in a lot of these situations. So we'll see what uh, Mighty RX James Richards and this team can do and put together for the second half, but they got to start out on the defensive side. They do indeed. 17-point deficit as we open up this uh, second half of play. And a chance for the Storm to kick it away and give Davius Reed back the football for the moment. See if maybe he can uh, put the Wildcats in a good field position situation. This is up and gone. Caught by Reed at the six-yard line. Return to the 20, moved left at the 25, the 30, and he gets all the way to the 32 on the strength of that spin move and will bring back out the Chicago offense. Mike Improta did not touch the ball last week on an offensive play. He's been a main blocking target for this Chicago offense. He has also not touched the ball in an offensive way in this game as well. No, but definitely making his impact on the Wildcats and on the league as a whole. I mean, when yep. you look at Ash Odom's numbers, 4.8 yards per carry, I mean, that just goes to show you what Improta's doing. Yeah, he's getting downfield, putting those blocks into motion. He does so here. Gets Odom broken free on the left-hand side. He's going to get a first down and more. It is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 5.4 today is what he's averaging on every carry. Yeah, what a carry by Odom, but you said it first. It's the blocking from Improta there to seal the edge along with the line, and even the receivers are getting involved downfield. It's a great job, and it opens up Odom on the outside. An absolute train of a rushing attack for the Wildcats, and they put it to good use. Three in the backfield. One of them's Odom, and one of them is Improta. One receiver to the right for E.T. King. Plenty in the box defensively for the Storm. Hand off Odom. Through the middle has about a truck-sized hole, and he's going to be able to get nine yards, second and one, as he gets out to the Florida 46. Yeah, nice carry, and now they're just really flexing their running game muscle and taking some time off this clock as well, Curtis. That's the one thing you also do when you run the ball effectively is that you give the other team less time with the football. And so far, Chicago has come out from the half and said, look, we're going to take time off this clock. We're going to win this game. That's going to be to the outside. Caught Ooh. and a hit out of bounds, third and two, as Odom gets lit up behind the line. Yeah, really good job there by Davidson getting off his block and forcing Odom out short of the line to gain. Last time that happened on a second down, Odom came back and plowed through a guy to pick up the first down. Let's see if he 
if they go to him again or whether they go to the air. Under center is King, two in the backfield. One in the slot, receiver on each side. Handoff, Odom through the middle, fourth and in inches. They are gonna say he did not get it. And you take a look, it's Alex Dominguez, big sexy on the stop. Yeah, one of the first times we've called his name tonight. That's his third tackle, just shy of the line to gain. And Chicago, I think, Curtis, rightfully so, keeping the offense here on the Florida side of the field. I would snap this and just live with the results either way. They are going to. Odom to the outside. He has the football trying to get there. He will get there. Big first down conversion on the fourth down. It is first and 10. Chicago keeps the drive alive. Well, and when I say that, Curtis, you know, my point being, if you pick up that first down, it really takes the wind out of Florida's sails. Yeah because the Storm thought that they just got off the field. I mean, you can see in the chat on twitch.tv backslash FTF next, Iceman Gervin 44 says, yay, we stopped him. Well, you know, not quite. <laughs> exactly. Odom with the first down carry. He's going to get it out second and five at the 40-yard line. They continue to move the ball forward. This is a well-oiled machine, as you alluded to earlier. Yeah, and, and, you know, when you take the wind out of Florida sails and you move this drive further, now just five to ten yards out of a field goal attempt, if you're Chicago, I mean, this is one of your more important drives of the game. Second and five. And off Odom. He's going to get a couple of yards. It is third and three. Visit Sector6Apparel.com for all league and team apparel, including hoodies, T-shirts, team jerseys, and more. Sector6, the official apparel provider of the Simulation Football League. Third and three, another big third down here. They're on the cusp of field goal range. We have 53 yard, 54 yarder here from, for, from this spot. Let's see what we decide to do. This will be a run oh, to wow. the right and fourth and four. So now it backs up another yard. You try it from here or do you go ahead and punt it? Um, from the 38, I would punt. Tomeo and Champion did a really good job of dropping Odom for a loss of yards. From here, I mean, CC has done so well for you. You don't want to hurt his confidence by giving him an, right. an impossible task. I think punting it away here is smart. Great job by Florida to, to come back after um, that fourth down conversion uh, that really looked like it could potentially hurt them. And that will bounce at the six yard line as well. They'll drop it at the eight and we will have the Storm's next possession in just a moment. Stay with us. Back to it, 20 to three, Chicago with the lead. They have the storm backed up to their own eight yard line as we're back here on 11 Sports. Chris Curtis, Andy Hamilton along with you, our commissioner and producer Cameron Irvine in the booth, pushing all the buttons and oh. catch to the right. Not much doing there. Let's talk about this, uh, this Florida offense, uh, Andy, as they've kind of gone backwards in seasons past. Yeah, and when you really look at what has happened, if you look there in season 13, they got rid of their halfback and just started the fullback only offense. Really kind of gone one dimensional with it. And there you kind of see the drop off through two seasons. Will it stay? Who knows? Uh, but we'll have to see through the rest of tonight's game um, how it plays out. Although, Curtis, an important note that was Chicago's first punt of the entire game. So things might be turning for the storm. That might be, and uh, also Weston was able to hold on to that ball, his first reception on three targets, and make it a third and manageable to the 14-yard line. So maybe they are starting to turn a new leaf. That would be nice for the Storm and the Faithful, who are in the crowd here tonight in Fort Lauderdale. And off. Can he get there? No, not going to happen. Fourth and one. J.W. Doyle cannot move forward enough to move the chains, and another likely punting situation. Greg Gaines coming up to make the tackle. Nice job by him to pursue to the ball. The Chicago defense 
Uh, Curtis, one thing they always do is rally to the ball. That's one thing that great teams do is get to the ball carrier, whether it's your guy or not. Uh, if it's one guy trying to tackle a guy, you're not going to get him. But if everyone tries, you'll bring him down eventually. That's going to be to the 35-yard line caught there and returned to the 39 for Davius Reed. So decent field position for Chicago as they start this next one up. Marcus Agrippa with another really nice punt. Yeah, Agrippa has been really putting a cannon to the ball uh, since he joined the league, but tonight has really impressed me with how easily he has flipped the field. King in the gun. To his left, Ash Odom trips left. First down play underway. Has the football. Deep left side tip. Dan incomplete. Decided to shake a shot, take a shot on first down. Did not work out as they came close to McWay. Yeah, was trying to get the work done on Evan Carroll. Carroll, that his fourth pass deflection um, this season. Uh, and his first one tonight as Chicago really has played a clean game through the passing attack. E.T. King, 80% uh, on completions there, Curtis. I mean, that's just, that's incredible. He's been a monster, no doubt about that one. Definitely finding his stride after a really good week last week for the entire Chicago team. Hand off, Odom right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing much going on with that. Make it third and long, third and nine coming up. Well, if you've ever watched uh, Wiley Coyote there, Curtis, and you know when he paints the, <laughs> the tunnel on the wall, that's what it looked like there as Ash Odom just ran into a brick wall and couldn't quite get through. See if they can uh, get through the brick wall this time. In fact, it'll be E.T. King with five wide. Trying to throw uh, over the brick wall. Third. Yeah, exactly. Just Why not? Just throw over the mountain. That's fine. First to throw, quick drop towards the first down marker. Tip in incomplete. That was a dangerous throw. Nearly made it work, but no go. Lucky it was not picked off as it went out of the receiver's hands and kind of just floated there in the middle of the field. And uh, a lot of secondary members for Florida would have loved to have take that, taken that one away. And now Chicago, second half, two drives, two punts. And that is a new leaf for the Storm defense as well. Good stops on a couple of successive drives for them. Punt up, coming in nearly blocked. That was very close. Hang time going to be around four seconds or a little bit more. Returned by Robert Merrill to the 27-yard line. Storm with a new drive and a new purpose. Trying to get back in this football game. You're watching the Simulation Football League at 11 Sports. Staying for the fans. Back to it, 17-point deficit for the Storm as they have the football and still some time to get back in this football game. Not out of it just yet. They uh, they could use a score to get themselves back within two possessions, uh, but the, it's been a uh, been a rough one so far offensively for them to see if they can turn a corner here on this drive. Cochran over the middle, trying to find a post route. Wow. He found his man. What a throw. What a grab. It's first and 10 near midfield. Threw him open right on the inside of the seam. A beautiful ball from Ron Cochran. A very important throw um, right down the middle to kind of show this Chicago team. Look, you know, they've lured him short and short and outside and on a slant route all night. And then they take a deep shot and it pays off. Might be an opportunity to take some more here, but I would go short a couple more times to try and lure them into another false sense of uh, safety. Throw it right side, caught for J.W. Doyle. That's a five-yard reception out to the 47-yard line into Chicago territory. A couple of positive plays in a row for the Storm. Gaines stayed down there in the flat. you got to be careful. He could jump one of those if the timing is off by just a little bit. So Florida has to, you know, take care of the football tonight. Both quarterbacks have so far. Um, got to be careful right side nothing much doing on the run 
as Doyle not able to go anywhere. Third and four. Doyle with three receptions tonight. He's been the main bell cow on the offensive side for the rushing attack. Nine attempts, 34 yards for that man there. Third and four again. This will be another big third down for the Storm. They really need a conversion. Got to get some points out of this drive if they can. I formation for Cochran. Plenty of time in the pocket. Pocket collapses. He still gets the ball off and has a first down. That is clutch for the Hall of Fame quarterback. It is first and 10. Merrill underneath the running back converted to receiver. That uh, right there was his second catch, uh, or first catch of the night, excuse me, for eight yards, only his 19th reception of the season, sparingly used, but, it, you know, if he can get going, he's got some wheels. He does indeed get him in an open field situation. He'll burn a lot of people. Under center by himself, Cochran thrown, tipped wow. in, incomplete. The linebacker, Clint Hendershot, gets a hand on it, knocks it down. Hendershot, just enough wingspan to put the... the old paw up there and bat that ball away it looked like it was going over his head and if it would have made it over his head that would have been a first down easy second and 10 at the Chicago 39 still not quite in field goal range although I guarantee you they do not want a field goal here if they can help it two in the backfield throw right side and should have been grabbed nothing doing and Weston three drops on four targets he does have at least a reception today though yeah, you're asking one of your players who doesn't see the ball much to make a tough catch on the outside like he's not used to. Like I said yep. you know, earlier in this game, Curtis, when you ask that of a player who's not used to making that play more often than not, it's a struggle to, to try and get production out of him that is going to be worth anything. Important third and 10 here. About five or six yards might be good enough for an attempt of a field goal. Empty backfield for Cochran once more. Quick drop, moves in the pocket, thrown, tipped, and incomplete. And the drive stalls out, fourth and ten. Interesting uh, thought process here, Andy. Do you treat it as four-down territory this much time left in the game? Uh, no. 17 okay. points with, uh, you know, 13 minutes of game time left, all three timeouts. you got to punt this one away. Give Agrippa a chance to pin Chicago deep here. This is a good opportunity for the rookie to make a mark. Get a chance for the Storm to play the field position game, something they have not had to do uh, really most of the night. This will be a kick that will get out at about the 12-yard line. And Agrippa, I think, probably wants that one back. It's not bad. The 12 is okay. It, it could have been a little bit better, yes. But, you know, hey, any time that you put them behind the 20, that's a win in my opinion. So up until this point in the game, no turnovers for either side in this football game either. Chicago in the positive, I believe, plus six on Jeez. the turnover count this season. Would you like to jinx it a little harder, Curtis? <laughs> First and ten. And off Odom. Going to try to get through the inside. Not going to work. He's taken down for a loss by big, sexy Alex Dominguez. Well, when they watch the film back here, they're going to have to talk about how Alex Dominguez was in there with such hurry. I mean, the tackles yep. for loss of this guy lead to the league. It's surprising how minimized his impact has been tonight. Been real, real good all year long and really a great career so far for the big man. Number 69 in the teal. Big throw. E.T. King. That one's picked off. And wouldn't you know it, that's returned back to the 20-yard line. It's Ryan Tobin, his third pick in two games. Well, I can just feel the hate mail for <laughs> Curtis coming from the Chicago area code now. Well, it, it was a dangerous throw. They were taking a deep shot for Torres, just a little bit underthrown. And when you have... Uh, a defender back there like Ryan Tobin. That's his sixth interception of the season. Had two last week against Atlanta. Three interceptions in two games. <laughs> Mike and Proda in the Twitch chat at twitch.tv backslash FTF next. Lighting me up in the chat for that uh, nice, uh, nice call out for the turnover. And it'll be <laughs> first and 10 for the Storm. But the 20-yard line is where they're at. Big chance for the Storm here, Andy, to get something oh. going. The handoff for Doyle. Big hit, second and seven. Man, Doyle looked like some Orville Redenbachers there, Curtis. He just got <laughs> popped. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> second and seven. Well, and you're not a fan of popcorn? Actually, no. I'm not a real big fan of it at all, actually. Well, we learned something new. Absolutely. Absolutely. You learn something new every day. 
We, we Taste is okay, but I hate what it does to teeth. Deep over the middle, looking for the end zone. He's got it. That's a big touchdown for the Storm. And get them back on the board, their first touchdown of the game. EJ Minson right there at the right time to make the right play. Had a touchdown last week versus Atlanta. Has another one this week against Chicago. That's two in two weeks. This tight end is heating up for the Storm, and he's got them back in this game. Had the lone receiving touchdown a week ago. Has the lone receiving touchdown for them this week as well. Big, dependable target over the middle for Ron Cochran, as you alluded to. Extra point coming. Get them back to a two-possession game, potentially. As long as this has no issues. Middle of the hash marks now for the uh, for the Storm kicker. This will be a big one for Ethan Sneed. Snap is high. Held well. Kick up and on the way. It is up, and it is a big one through. 20-10. Chicago going to get the ball back, now looking at a 10-point lead instead. Stay with us. And welcome back into Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The eye is where we're at. Chris Curtis, Andy Hamilton in the booth with you. Got Jacob Clear on stats and Cameron Irvine, our commissioner and producer, in the booth hitting all the buttons, making it look real, real good. 2010, Chicago with a 10-point lead on the road in Florida. This will be returned by Davius Reed out to the 20 spin move at the 25, and it'll be taken down there. So enter E.T. King, who probably wants to take some time off this clock and try to slow the pace of this game down a little bit. Well, I think he would like you to shut up too, Curtis. I mean, with all your thing that you've, you've done for the <laughs> Chicago team, they were, they were moving like a well-oiled machine, and then you just had to say that no quarterback has thrown an interception so far tonight, and things turned. So... This time out, I expect Chicago to get back to their roots, run the ball. Yeah, I expect ETK to heave it up at the broadcast before where I'm at in here in a second. <laughs> second and 10 as a big hit as Odom gets taken down right at the line of scrimmage by Evan Carroll. That would be uh, some longest yard style stuff there. But <laughs> exactly. I, I tell you what, as long as uh, E.T. King gives me the thumbs up so I can go to the concession stand when he gives it a shot, that's fine with right. me. Absolutely. You got, you, got your, you got him in your headset, don't you? <laughs> well, I gotta protect gun. this. I gotta protect this face. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. King to throw over the middle. Deep oh! ball caught back across midfield to the 45-yard line. 47 is where they're gonna mark him at Shan Varner again over the top. Et King reacts. He uh, he heard that you like apple turnovers, so he said, "How about damn apples, Curtis?" And threw a big time bomb over the top to Varner. And uh, you know, tight ends aren't usually known for running, but got a little bit loose there and. Varner has been good for deep yardage right across the middle almost all night. Twitch chat, send help. I can't handle any Hamilton tonight. Not a problem. The first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Hand off. Ash Oda got some room to work on the inside. couple yards for him. It's second and seven. Yeah, and Odom just really changing the pace here and, you know, making Florida respect the run game as well because that is an important aspect of this Chicago offense. You know, as much as... They've been known in the past couple years for being a passing right. team. This year, their run offense is just as good. 38-yard line. Chicago trying to get that touchdown right back if they can. They're moving the ball downfield with pretty good efficiency. King to throw. Five-step drop. Right side. Tipped and incomplete. Dangerous. And a jumped route that nearly worked. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third frame. 20-10. to 10, Chicago doubling up. The Storm in Fort Lauderdale. This is the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and for the fans.
back to it. 20 to 10 score line as we start the fourth stanza of this one. Not George Costanza, but just a stanza. I promise. 20 to 10. Chicago has the football in hand. And Ryan Tobin, you take a look at him there, has an interception in this game. Three in two games. Jeez. And E.T. King is in the gun. Third and seven. Come on, man. <laughs> High snap, brought it down, looks to throw over the middle, and it is tipped and incomplete. Unfortunate that he could not bring that one in. It'll be fourth and seven, and decision time here for Shane Varner and company. Second time this game, they've gone to Liam Hammer to try and uh, pick up the first down, and he hasn't been able to hold on. A newer right. member of the league has just struggled to to really you know, get the reps in practice to be able to yep. hold on. Over time, that'll change. Uh, but for now, Chicago going to punt this one away and the storm very much alive. They are indeed, but Chicago is content to play the field position game and they can afford to at this point as this will be kicked end over end to the five yard line. Storm looking for a bounce into the end zone and they'll get one. That is fortunate for them as it'll get out to the 20 yard line. So give Ron Cochran the football and only a two possession deficit to work against here. And with a whole fourth quarter to go, this this game far from over. Well, and Ron Cochran, through the uh, first five games of the season, has averaged over two picks per game uh, there, Curtis, and hasn't thrown one today. So surprising uh, that, that you know, he's been so clean. Let's see if he keeps it up. And especially against a secondary who had six last week against Ashley Jackson wow. and the Scorpions. That's a second and ten as that ball goes over the middle. Uh, Minson, your intended receiver. Well, and Cochran, 72 yards behind uh, Christian Christensen for number seven in yards all time, although Christensen still has to play uh, this week. Right. So those two are going to be going back and forth in uh, yards all time. Also, just 200 yards away uh, from 23,000 on his career. He's at 124 now, Curtis, so about 76 yards away. Looks to throw. Cochran, right side tipped and incomplete. To update from our other game, uh, just entering the fourth quarter as well, 10-3 to Queen City. However, Carolina was knocking on the door. I'm not sure how that ended up, but either way, it's a uh, at least a one-score game over there. For third and 10, upcoming here back in Florida, as Cochran faced with a tough third down and one that his team probably needs here. Yeah, they absolutely need this third down. Big play. Cochran quick drop back lets the route develop thrown and incomplete nothing doing again Clint Hendershot he's been all over the place tonight another stop on third down it's going to force the Storm to think about punting here Hendershot tried to scoop that one off the ground Curtis and that really just would have been the icing on the cake for a wonderful night so far for Clint Hendershot five tackles now three pass deflections uh, really really just all over the field and has been the playmaker on this defense for the Wildcats. And arguably your player of the game so far for the Chicago Wildcats. All over Ash Odom might have something to say about that. This will be a kick from Agrippa past the midfield stripe all the way down to the 40 or to the 30 yard line. And he's going to be a tackle for Davius Reed at the 32. So give Chicago back the football as they completely reverse field and get it back to the Chicago side of the 50. Yeah, eight drives for Chicago tonight. Uh, they have punted three times, all coming here in this second half. The Florida defense has buckled down, and they're trying to do so again here. 10-31, plenty of time, but if they could get off the field, that would be big. King to throw. Outside, and did he keep it in? He yeah. did, but not for much. It's a one-yard completion. Well, nice job by Mike and Proto to touch the ball and get yep. out there. I'm sure his uh, family at home will love that one-yard reception. Hey, nothing, nothing like uh, getting no, a reception. No, nothing to knock. So I've never, absolutely. I've never caught a ball in the simulation football league. So <laughs> hey, you one up on me there, Mike. Yeah, there you go. There you go. His first uh, offensive touch in a couple of games, but he's been, he's had an impact, no doubt about that. King to throw. Gets it to the outside. Ooh. That's a catch for Odom on a spin, and he's going to get lit up near the first down marker, third and one. Ryan Davidson really broke through the block, and, I mean, Curtis, they got to be careful about trying that any more times. <laughs> if you watch here, I mean, if he would have got two hands through there, I mean, oh, my gosh. 
look out. Lucky for them, Odom makes the grab and gets up field. Uh, they got to be real careful here on third and one, not to try anything too crazy. At very least, keep this clock running. Third and one. The big third down defensively for the Storm. King to throw. Pressure coming. Throws to the outside. Has a catch, but out of bounds he goes. That's not going to work. Odom steps out. It's fourth and four. They'll call it a loss, and they'll have to punt. Well, I, uh, I never like square dancing or swinging, and uh, unfortunately <laughs> that swing there goes right out of bounds, and uh, Chicago's drive ends right there. Like I said, they had to be real careful there, Curtis. And, uh, you know, the swing pass doesn't usually seem like a, a big play, uh, but unfortunately it was there, and it gives the ball back to Florida here still plenty of time. Uh, Sandro Tomaello is the one who went up and made the hit on King as that ball was thrown. This will be returned by Merrill. Nothing much doing on it, though. First and 10 for the Storm at the 23-yard line. Two games tonight, six games tomorrow for the SFL as we get the entire family going on across all of our uh, networks. It is a full slate on a Sunday uh, afternoon and evening in the Simulation Football League. Week, week six gets into full swing. First and 10. Oh, Grin immediately gets sacked. That's not the way you want to do that. And they're going to lose six on the play. What a hit. Gerald Giudicessi looks like a uh, bagger at Walmart. He says, do you want paper or plastic, sir? Because you just got <laughs> sacked. <laughs> right up there i mean immediately i mean they don't even attempt to block him did they not watch the game against arizona where he had two right. sacks or did they not pay attention because he just ran through there that's three sacks in two games and uh really puts florida back to start this drive not where they want to be especially when trying to come back here defensive line's gonna move to the right second and 16 throw the middle and it's caught what a grab towards midfield and that is first and 10 at the Florida 44 yard line at Stephen Bush. Bush does a good job of getting open here, working the route, falls right in between where the safety and cornerback are covering. It's a beautiful route and gains. I mean, there's not much you can do there as a cornerback. Crazy good throw by Rod Cochran. He's made a few of those in his uh, long, long career in the simulation football league. He's got a first and 10 to work with. Empty backfield. Four on the defensive line for Chicago. Quick drop. Plenty of time. Shallow cross, and that is going to be incomplete. Second and ten. Not much they can do there. Ten-point deficit for the Storm, trying to work against it. Second and ten. And this would be a prime time to try to get at least manageable yardage on third down. And Chicago's defense coming into the game allows uh, about 60% on third down, but on the earlier downs, they have uh, done a good job tonight. And off, J.W. Doyle goes roughly nowhere. Two-yard gain, and you talk about Blake B. Craze. He has been a uh, monster this season for Chicago defensively. Third in the league tied in total tackles. 41 solo tackles as well. Yeah, really, I honestly think both of these linebackers are almost world-class in what they do, um, and you got to keep getting them involved. Thrown over the middle, and it's going to be a catch. That's a great catch in traffic, first and 10 for the Storm on a huge play to get them a new set of downs as E.J. Minson. And it's a beautiful route here, and it's working right in front of Craze there. Ron Hoff can't make the play on the deflection and Florida has life. I, I honestly think Curtis, that run by Doyle was not in their best interest. I think you got to abandon the run at this point. Four on the line again. Cochran with two in the backfield. Trying not to abandon the run. That'll be a run forward for JW Doyle. He's got a couple of yards on it, make it a five yard gain forward. And at least keeps him on a second and five. Yeah, and my point being, you're taking more time off the clock, which at this point, it's a two-possession game. You're just hurting yourself. You know, with the more time you take off, they don't have a lot of urgency right now getting on the ball, so running the ball doesn't do much help to them, especially when they're only averaging three yards a carry. 
Cochran with a quick drop back, thrown right side, not going to get the first down, make it third and one after a four-yard reception off towards the sideline for Weston. Gains a good tackle right in front of Shan Varner to bring up this third and one. This Wildcats team unfortunately has let Florida into field goal range, which means that as long as they don't take a sack or a big loss here, they're most likely going to get some points out of this drive. Third and one, big third down for both these teams. Hand off. Oh, no, he's moving backwards. Oh. That's not good. Fourth and three. They do take a loss of a couple. Still within field goal range. It'd be a 47-yarder from this spot. No, but it just highlights the point that, you know, you should not be running the ball this late in the game. You're averaging three and a half yards a carry, and you're averaging five and a, about five and a half yards a pass attempt. You might as well throw it, and if it's dropped, it's dropped. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're exactly right. Ethan Sneed going to try to get them a little bit closer, though. From the right hash, kick up and on the way after a good snap. Needs it, got it. Big kick, big three points. Get them back to within a possession. You know, and it's important here for Sneed to nail this one. They put him in range, and he does a good job here. Now increasing to 14 for 14 this season uh, and really puts them at to a seven-point advantage. One possession game in Florida. We'll be back. Back to it in the late later stages, anyway, of the fourth quarter of play. 20 to 13, Chicago going to get the ball back. They have the lead as well. As we start this next drive off, returned by Davies Reed from the seven yard line, the 20 to the 27 yard line, and that is where they will start this next drive. Enter one ET King one more time, at least, as he's going to try to take as much time off of this clock as he possibly can with plenty of time on it. And I expect a steady diet here of Vash Odom here, Andy. Yeah, what a great job by Florida trusting their defense here to kick it deep. You don't need to try the onside with 543 left to go. And Chicago here is going to go for the jugular. Let's see what they can do. Trips right for ET. Let's the routes develop. Crossing pattern gets them an eight-yard gain. For those of you viewing for the first time, what are you watching? The Simulation Football League is the first controllerless eSport, allowing you, the viewer, to participate in all the action on the field without a controller in your hands. Visit simulationfl.net for details on how to get started with a team and in the league. And there you can join things like our Discord channel. You can get into the chat on the twitch.tv backslash FTF next. Join the conversation with a whole bunch of players, coaches, staff, a whole bunch of really good personalities in there that would love to get you started as well. That's a really big hit by the Storm as they continue to try to bottle up uh, the offense of Chicago, and it's a big third down on this play. Yeah, Frank Champion, a good job to force this third and two. Let's see what Chicago does. Try that screen pass if you got it. Now's the time. Bottom of the screen's open. And they're going to go the other way. It'll be out to the flat, and Odom can't get free. That's a tackle for loss, fourth and four. And they will let the clock run, but they will get the ball back in a one-score game. Chicago shut out in the second half here. They have struggled to get this offense working as it have. They've been cursed by uh, not only the on-the-field play, but also a man up here in the booth who will remain nameless. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, now Florida has the opportunity to get right back in this game. They do indeed. Punt upcoming. Robert Merrill waiting on the other side of the field for this kick to eventually head his way. Low snap, dangerous, and it was handled well. Kick is on the way. It'll get to about the 27-yard line, and he's taken down at the 29. Big drive, obviously, for Ron Cochran and company. They have not been this close to a tie game since the first quarter of play. This is massive for this Week 6 matchup. 
Well, and as a veteran, Cochran's in a good position because he doesn't he knows he knows he has to stay calm. For yep. some of the rookie quarterbacks, you would see them start to get a little nervous here against uh the defense who is third best in the SFL with 16 takeaways. Free oh, free play. play. Over the middle. That is a diving catch going forward, and it will negate the penalty. What a grab by Robert Merrill. It's a first down on the Chicago side of the field. Yeah, just about to midfield. What a catch from Merrill. What a throw from Cochran, knowing he had a free play. The hard count worked, and now Chicago backed up. They can bend. They just don't have, they can't break here, Curtis. This is a dangerous time, and I'll tell you what, Cochran needed that. What an effort by Merrill. You saw him stretching so far forward on that. That is a gorgeous play from him at a time when his team most desperately needs it. New set of downs. Just shy of midfield. Handoff. Doyle through the middle. Going to keep him honest. Get a couple more yards. Second and seven after a three-yard run. Well, and Chicago's fine with that. They'll give up three yards every single play if it's right up the middle to Doyle and it keeps the clock moving. That's totally fine from the Wildcats. Split backs for Cochran here. On the defensive line for the Wildcats. Another one for Doyle up the middle. He's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. That's a key stop. Make it third and long. Judas Sessian on the tackle. Yeah, that's the only play they have in that formation. For those of you who don't know, uh, real people, coaches, and uh, owners make the playbooks for these teams. And uh, you can choose as many or as few plays in a playbook formation as you'd want. In that one, Florida only has that run play up the middle. Looks to throw, right side, that's caught. Trying to turn the corner, he's not gonna do it. And I dare say it's probably four down territory here in this spot, fourth and three. Yeah, you, uh, you gotta go for this one. You gotta try and pick up these three yards and keep your game alive and let's see what they're gonna do. Looks like Chicago's playing some form of man. Still time and timeouts on both sides. Doyle oh. through the middle, he's gonna get taken down. Turnover on down, Chicago has the football. Blake Craze may have just ended this game and he waltzes off cool and calm as ever. What a play and I, I you know, as much as the, the Seahawks get flack for throwing the ball at the goal line, <laughs> I, I think Florida should get some flack for handing this ball off on fourth and three. Doyle's only averaging 2.9 yards a carry, and you trusted him to get more than his average there. So one first down is possibly going to end this game. Chicago in a first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Three timeouts for the Storm. Odom, oh, right down. side, trying to break a tackle. He does, trying to get closer to the first down marker. He's going to get seven, and then he is taken down at that point. Seven yards puts his average up above four yards a carry. Um, and, and it's a great opportunity here for Chicago. I mean, you said it, Curtis. One first down puts this thing away, and they can take this to the two-minute warning if they want. They don't have to snap it before then. Second and two. Under center, E.T. King in absolutely no hurry as he walks his way up to the line. Seven in the box. And that is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. 120 seconds left in a one-possession game in Florida. You're enjoying the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports and Sand for the fans. And welcome back in to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 20 to 13. Second and three for the Wildcats to try to get a first down to possibly end this game. Odom is in the backfield in what looks like a possible running formation. It'll be a throw to the outside. Has to try to break a tackle. He does! That's a big first down for Chicago, and it will likely mm -hmm. seal it. However, no. somehow the Storm managed to hold on to all their timeouts. No, no, he stepped out of bounds. That is not going to seal it. It actually is going to force Chicago to pick up another first down. Yeah, Would have right. been better for him to just fall down inbounds short of the line to gain. 
Interesting, interesting as they work the sidelines and it comes back to bite them first and 10. Still three timeouts per side. Minute four, minute to and 55 seconds to go. King is under center. Goes Odom's way again. This time he has blockers in front of him. Plenty of time and he will move his way forward for a five yard gain and finally Florida starts to call a timeout. Well, this is interesting. It'll depend on how many times they continue to flip it out to him in this formation. He could run out of bounds. We've seen Ryan Carroll stay in the flats a little bit and almost make some deflections, if not picks. There's a lot of dangerous plays that could be made here. Same formation for Chicago. Same defensive stand looks like for the Storm as well. And same play to the outside. Odom with the ball in his hands. Big truck. He's got some room to go and finally gets hit at the 21-yard line of Florida. Their infield goal range. And at this point, they can start to suck the suck the uh, time off the clock. What an incredible job by Odom, though, to stay in bounds. I want you to watch this, Curtis. Impressive to pick up the first down going through a man. But right here at the end, look, could have gone Oof. out. Still could have gone out. Stays in bounds. A very veteran move that gives Chicago really the opportunity to put this game to rest because if he had gone out, Florida would have been, you know, still in this game. The uh, courage on the Chicago sideline as well to call the same play three times in a row and eventually just know it's going to work when you put the ball in the playmaker's hand. That's crazy as victory formation time for the Wildcats at the Florida 21-yard line as the first kneel down is done and Florida will end their last time out. Yeah, minute 40. I'm trying to do the math, and I'm not good at it. I'm only good with threes and sevens because that's field goals <laughs> and touchdowns. Uh, I, I don't know if this is going to finish it, but it will make it a two-possession game. Um, so even if Florida gets the ball back, they're not going to be able to score enough points to get back in this right. game. Yeah, that is likely going to seal things here as this will be one more kneel down from E.T. King. But uh, let's look a little bit forward on these two rosters. The Chicago is going to walk away with this game. Uh, likely going to be a win. Uh, like I said, six games tomorrow getting started at uh, 12 noon with two games. It is Arizona at the Atlanta Swarm and the Gladiators at the Vancouver Legion. So a red-eye flight for you back to Canada. Yeah, uh, we, we're excited about the opportunity to get back to Canada so quickly, but uh, still <laughs> a, a, an exciting game tonight. Well worth the trip. Yeah, absolutely. The 5-0. Uh, and oh. Vancouver Legion and uh, not meaning to sound surprised because it's been a very very good team effort there it, it, it sounded more surprised than I made that I intended to make it Andy apologies it sounded more like you were questioning it you were reading off a note and you were like five and oh is that right no they uh, the league has been uh very very across the board competitive this year and I think that's something that's surprising to a lot of people in the simulation football league uh, you know, a team like Florida to be sitting at two and four is surprising for a lot of people considering their two championship uh, rings on Mighty's hand here on the sideline. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's very shocking. But I tell you what, there's a lot of season left. This is the halfway point of the league for season 14. And uh, if I had to fathom a guess by playoff time, things will look a little different. 43-yarder is up and through. They'll call it 42 from Anthony CC as he is perfect again on this day. Make it 23-13, a 10-point contest. And I do believe, and I have to check my, my stat book on this, uh, Vancouver Legion as well have yet to still give up a rushing touchdown in Season 14. Well, and is it a little fitting, Curtis, that last time Chicago played Florida in their home stadium, they could not get the field goal off to send the game to overtime, <laughs> yeah. but they potentially end this game with a field goal. Yep, absolutely. This will be a return from Robert Merrill back at the end zone. We're back at the goal line to the 20, 20 oh, look five, out. moves left to the 30. Look out. Breaks a tackle, 35 yard line is where he's gonna get taken down finally with 11 seconds to go. For these two teams, as we look forward, uh, Chicago with a win today, they go next to, or they go back home and host St. Louis in one week's time. And then on the other side, the Storm, their next matchup is in the desert at the Scorpions in Arizona. So that'll be a, a couple of games to possibly keep yourself on the right track and possibly move on the right track the way uh, last week went at least for the Scorpions. You know, it could have gone a lot better. Yeah, and the Scorpions uh, league best in takeaways. So for Ron Cochran, the sledding doesn't get any easier. They were right. very protective of the ball in this game. 
Um, and it, you know, I would argue, Curtis, it came back to bite them. The decision to be conservative on fourth down and hand the ball off to Doyle instead of giving Ron Cochran the opportunity to throw for the first down, um, you know, it hurt them. And we're going to have to see how they react um, for James Richards and this coaching staff. You know, they're young. They have an opportunity here to learn from whatever happened tonight. Mm-hmm. and uh, take it into next week's game against a very seasoned veteran uh, defensive coordinator in Eddie Gage. And this will be a long throw. Hail Mary up and gone from Cochran. And this is incomplete. And that will end our football game this evening. The Storm at home get beaten by the Chicago Wildcats 20 to 23 to 13. Andy Hamilton, your final thoughts. Yeah, I thought it was a quality game. Chicago put up a really good first half that made it tough for Florida to counter in the second half. But boy, did Florida come out and, you know, really supply a couple of, you know, really nice punches to this Wildcats team. Held them to only three points here in the second half uh, on what really was a 10-3 to run through the second half. It was exciting the whole way through. Uh, but at the end of the day, Chicago hangs on. Um, to get the win against a Storm team that historically has been very good. Um, So, you know, for Chicago, this is a very good victory. And for Florida, lots to learn from this. They did also have Optimus Klein, their best receiver, go down on pretty much the first snap of the game. So this team's going to be stronger than they look tonight. Um, And, you know, these games happen sometimes in the league. But like I said, six weeks to go um, and lots of opportunity. But in in terms of a, a player of the game, uh, Curtis, I'm going to go off yeah. the rails a little bit here. I don't know if we've ever had a tight end be the player of the game in the Simulation Football League, but how about Shan Varner? 89 yards on five catches and one touchdown for the uh, the Wildcats. He's the leading receiver in terms of yardage and receptions. Uh, you know, I, I think it'll probably go to E.T. King, uh, but I, I would like to see Varner get a shot. Also, the first win for Chicago over Florida. Uh, even dating back to when they were the Alaska Storm, so that's a uh, it was two or nothing for the all-time series coming into this contest. So that's a that's a good stat as well. But uh, good game all around. I would like to see Shan Burner get it. Uh, we'll see if that is indeed the case. You could also look Gerald Judicessi's way or Clint Hendershot on the defensive side of the ball. But either way, that is going to do it for us here in the booth for our comm- commissioner and producer Cameron Irvine. And the statistician, Jacob Clear, Andy Hamilton, I am Chris Curtis saying goodbye and good night. It is E.T. King who brings it home. You have been watching the Simulation Football League on 11 Sports. And for the fans, for more information, head over to simulationfl.net. Good night from Fort Lauderdale.